My name is Luke, this is the Outdoor Gear Review. Welcome to the Creeper Walk 2019. Guys, gals, let's do this. The name of this game is walking. Lots and lots of walking. The Creeper Walk involves a 34 mile trek and it's going to take roughly 12 hours to get this done. 34 miles, 12 hours to do it. Now honestly, I'm hoping to go much faster than that. I'd like to get this done in 11 hours at least. We shall see. The adventure starts here in Damascus, Virginia. We have roughly 17 miles to go until we reach Abington, Virginia. Then, once we arrive there, we turn around and come back. I'm super excited about this trip. The question is, can I still do it? It's been four years since I've hiked 34 miles in one day in 12 hours. To be honest, I haven't been hiking like that in a long time. This here is an endurance game. It's all about stamina, fortitude. I think I got it, we shall see though. Oh man, I tell ya, it feels good out here today, everybody. The wind is blowing about 15 miles an hour. It's about 54 degrees. It's a little bit after 1230. Walking next to the river, which is definitely up. I tell ya, starting to get hungry. Especially now that I'm next to this restaurant right up here on the hill. Whew. Meatball subs, pizza, this smells pretty good. In a couple of miles, we'll stop, have lunch, and get fueled up for this trip. So let me tell you everybody, I like Damascus. This is a cool little trail town in Virginia. Not much going on, pretty sleepy. It's all about the Appalachian Trail and the Creeper Trail. Both come through the area, and essentially, that's the lifeblood for this town. <laughs> There's not much else going on here. What that is exactly, I'm not sure. It definitely deals with water, some sort of well house, large scale well house, something like that. It's cool. Now with this adventure, I am excited to get away from town, get away from people, get out in the country. We have maybe four or five miles to go before we're away from all of this, away from the road. So my plan is basically, to make that happen nice and quick. Less talky, more walky. Let's do this. Back there where I was talking about the good smells, from the sub place, there was a picnic table. There was a dog on it, a guy sitting there. I could be wrong, but my instincts tell me that that guy was shooting up, shooting something up into his arm. The way that he was sitting there and holding himself was a little strange. Always listen to your spidey senses. I was going to set up the camera and film right there, but I was like, you know what? I think I'm gonna keep on going. <laughs> when you hike the creeper trail, when it takes 12 hours, when you're doing this in the dark, like I'm going to be doing in a couple of hours, trust your spidey senses. I was talking to my brother there through text. He's a pretty funny guy. You guys wanna know what he told me? Well, first off, I tell him, hey dude, I think I saw a guy shooting up. And he's like, well, that's great. He's preparing to hike the creeper trail as well. The difference is, is that instead of hiking it for 12 hours, He'll hike this thing for 26 because he's not a puss cake like me. <laughs> I love you, buddy. I wish you were here so I could kick you in the balls, man.
Hello. How are you? Once we get out of town, I'll feel much better, much more relaxed. Being around people and all that stuff, that kind of stresses me out. Plus, I don't like walking next to people's houses. If you've ever seen a creeper walk, you all know the crazy experience that I had up here. There used to be, not sure if it's still there or not, like an old RV park restaurant. One day I come out here real early to hike the creeper. I mean, it's probably like four or five o'clock in the morning. There's this RV that's right next to the trail. Lights are on, blinds are open so I can look right inside. There's a naked dude and a naked chick having a good old time. <laughs> Oh, it was so awful. That was not a good show. <laughs> ah, yeah. Good old times on the creeper. So this was the place. This is the restaurant. And the RV was like right here, parked this way. I could look right in the window. This doesn't look like an RV park anymore. Some of this looks different than how I remember it. I mean, heck, it's been four years since I've really been out here. Things come and go, don't they? Now when it comes to mileage, how far am I? I have no idea. And the truth is, I do not want to know. For me, it is so much more pleasant having no idea how far, how much further I have to go. It's just something to dwell on. Especially once you start getting tired, you're starting to get sore. I find that the last thing that I want to think about is how many more miles I have to endure. Hopefully folks, the audio hasn't been bad because I just realized that my mic was awfully loose. I noticed that it was loose when it fell off the camera, so hopefully it hasn't been too bad. All right, getting nice and hot. It's time to ditch the sweater. I will definitely need that later on tonight though because it is supposed to get rather cold. I'm numerous miles in, feeling great. I really want to get out of town before I stop and have lunch. Someplace nice. I don't want to hear traffic. You see those concrete pillars with the numbers? Those are mile markers. We started at 17, we're now at 13, making pretty good progress. Luckily, it'll be nice and dark for the return, and I don't have to look at those things and count them one after another. So, one hour in, my pace is pretty good, about four miles per hour. Now, I'm able to do this because the creeper trail is relatively flat. That is freaking awesome. Finally getting out of town. There's still a couple houses we have to go past, but the traffic's going to die down. It's going to get quiet, a little bit more relaxed and peaceful. Coming up here on the water processing plant for Damascus. Boy, can it smell awful. Lots of goes through <laughs> this processing plant. And that has always made me not want to drink water <laughs> from that river right there. Anytime that I have to drink water from that source, I filter it and I still use chemical drops. Overkill, yes. Peace of mind, yes. I wonder if anybody ever uses that, or is it just something super, super old? For the most part, we are now away from houses, buildings. We have a road here, but it's not too busy. Let's get some miles behind us. 
Oh yeah, by the way, everybody who's wondering about my skin cancer scare, I did hear back from the dermatologist. It was not skin cancer, but it was a wake up call to be more careful, more diligent. I have full sunscreen on. You have to be proactive about this sort of stuff because the truth is you do not want to get skin cancer. Bad news, very bad news. As you can see, this area has been receiving a lot of rain. There's been a lot of flooding. Flood stage actually got up to that point there with the shirt that shredded. I almost forgot. What do you guys think about my new sunglasses? Something new after how many years of wearing the safety glasses? <laughs> <laughs> the gigantic safety glasses. A viewer bought me these sunglasses, sent these to me, and my friend, they are awesome. Thank you so much. I don't know how much sunglasses cost, but with these being Oakleys, I'm sure they're not cheap. So thank you so much, buddy. I'm moving up in the world, how about that? Oh man, I smell cow manure. Smells good. Now, if you're a city person, you're not gonna like it, but if you're a country person, if you're a country boy like myself, maybe a country girl, you're gonna love it. You know, everybody, <laughs> a funny memory just came to mind. Stop interrupting me, man. Anyways, years ago, came out here with my brother and my buddy Chris, right? So we got out to this area here, middle of the night, hiking around, having a good old time. My buddy Chris, his butt crack is chafed. Every step is rubbing him raw. We're a good ways in. We have to turn around and go back. He's hurting bad. He is walking backwards with his butt cheeks spread apart. <laughs> oh, man. I tell you, I felt for him big time. And the thing is, I've been there. <laughs> I've had to do that too. Uh, there's nothing worse than that. I don't see cows yet, but I smell cows. They are around here somewhere, unless my sniffer's broken. Ah, yes. There's the cows. I knew it. Whenever I get the chance, find a place to sit down, relax for a minute. It is time for some lunch. I'm starving. So far, so good with the Creeper Walk 2019. Only seen a handful of people. I think maybe four people were riding bikes. I set the dogs off, apparently. <laughs> Oops, coming up upon the very first trussle. I really don't remember how many trussles there are for the entire creeper trail, but we have 15 more of these to go before we get to Abington.
if I'm not mistaken, I'm getting pretty close to Alvarado, Alvarado, something like that. Making really good progress, feeling good, trying not to pay attention to the uh, mile markers. Yeah, so far, so good, guys. There are quite a few cattle gates that you have to go through on your way to Abington. And that's because some of this is private land. You'll find cows out here quite often. I'm not seeing any today though. Not in this section anyway. That is an awesome rock formation. How are you? All right, nice thing. Yes, it is. It is a very nice day. What is it, buddy? <laughs> I think the last time I was out here, that dog was a puppy. And I remember you barking at me then. <laughs> All right, coming up upon Alvarado, Alvarado, whatever it may be. Let's go find out what it is. All right, everybody, check this out. The day that I was hiking the Creeper Trail going through the Alvarado section, law enforcement was actually pulling a body from the river. That happened roughly an hour before I got there. You can see a law enforcement member like walking towards the river. You can see his vehicle there on the right. That is pretty crazy, everybody. I noticed that the parking lot was packed full of vehicles, but I really didn't pay attention to see what type of vehicles they were. I was really destination oriented. I wanted to get down to Abington and start head back before the sun went down. At the time of filming this here, they have not released the cause of death for the individual that was found in the river or his identity. This river really is up. I've never in fact seen it this high before. <laughs> wow, this is impressive. To kill some time, I'm listening to a movie on my phone. There's a website that you can go to called Listen to a Movie or something like that. And you can download the MP3s and listen to them. It's pretty cool. It's a great way to pass the hours. Right now, I am listening to Red Dawn. You guys remember that movie? It's awesome. 
That is what I've been waiting to see. That bench right there, it is time to eat. It's lunchtime, I'm starving. Might even be time for some coffee. Cold coffee. <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> I'm a little bit tired, I have to be honest. Really what it is, I need some food, I need some coffee, uh, a little bit of a break here will do me some good. Bird food, bird food, wolf food. Mm -hmm. As it stands right now, I have plenty of time to get to Abington and turn around before it's completely dark. The sun will definitely be going down by the time I get there. I really don't want to be caught in Abington at nighttime when the sun goes down. The place is just incredibly violent. Lots of shootings, stabbings, stabbings. A lot of people stab for some reason in Abington. I'm not really sure why. As we get closer to town, I will share with you all some crazy facts about Abington. Now with this trip here, I am going fast and I'm going lightweight. So I'm eating half of this sandwich. I'm saving the other half for later. I have a ton of snacks with me. So I'm going to hike, snack for the most part. I'm going to make some cold coffee. I'm not sure if you guys noticed, but on my pack here on my waist belt, I have a water bottle. I can continuously add water to this. I can have coffee. I can have an electrolyte mix. It's a great way to carry some coffee with me, some go juice, in other words, whenever I need it. All right, everybody, let's rock and roll. Had a good 10 minute break there, feel good. Got some food in me. Now it's time to drink some cold coffee. This is an espresso Folgers mix, ultra nasty. It's really not that bad. Tastes like We are not that far away from Abington, roughly seven miles, something like that. I was definitely making awesome progress that first hour. I really wanted out of Damascus. <laughs> As mentioned before, I don't really like walking around people's homes and with cars and whatnot. For now, I'm in the woods until we get to Abington. This is such a beautiful spot up here. This guy has an amazing farm. I've been out here riding my bike, doing the trail in the daytime. Been caught in some severe thunderstorms. Crazy lightning. This is an area that frequently gets very strong storms. No idea why, but it does. Dinner time. Dinner time for the cows. Look at him run. Six. Six miles to Abington. Two hours, we'll be there. A little bit less than that. Hi guys. <laughs> I'll see you guys in a couple hours, okay? 
I think my pack is starting to squeak. Squeak, squeaky, squeaky, squeaky. Now check out this trussle. This trussle, many years ago, was destroyed by a tornado. Tornado came through, absolutely destroyed this. The shadow of the bridge casting through the forest. It's not bad. Six more trussles until we get to Abington. Woo! Getting pretty close to Abingdon now. Let's go over some fun stats in regards to this town, the city, and the reason why I really don't care for it all that much. First off, Abington is a small town in Virginia. It's roughly 133 miles southwest of Roanoke. As I mentioned before, during the day, the place isn't bad. It has a lot of history there. There's a lot of artsy stuff, theater, restaurants, and so on. But when the sun goes down, the place is incredibly violent. In fact, Abington has an 80% higher crime rate than the rest of the state. The population is right at 8,000 people. And over the last year, here are some of the crimes that have taken place in Abington. This is crazy stuff. 32 were convicted of trafficking drugs from Las Vegas to Southwest Virginia in Abington. Man stabbed brother-in-law once in the groin, once in the knee. Individual was also charged with hit and run. Man stabs father to death, sentenced for 50 years. An Abington man is charged with first degree murder, robbery, intent to commit murder, assault on a family member, two counts of child endangerment. Altercation leads to all three who were involved Dead. This one here is my favorite. Suspicious person acting strangely told to leave airport terminal after stating he was waiting to meet the president of Mexico. Abington attorney charged with distributing drugs inside of the courthouse. Wife shoots and kills husband. All of that took place within the last year. And that's not even half of it, really. I think in the movie, The Lost Boys, it's an old vampire movie. And grandpa and the uh, grandkid, they're going to go to town. The grandkid's super excited. They hop inside the car crank it up, rev the engine, turn the car off. And the grandkid says, Grandpa, aren't we going to town? And he's like, that's as close to town as I like to get. That's how I feel. I want to be away from Abington by the time the vampires come out. You know what I mean? Now we are roughly two miles outside of town on the trail. And look what we have here. Emergency call boxes so you can get 911 assistance if you need it. That tells you something, don't it? So I am not far from town now, and let me tell you folks, there's this roar. I don't know if you guys can hear it or not. I don't know if the mic will pick it up, but it's the sound of traffic. The interstate goes through here. We will actually go under a bridge in a little bit. It's incredible how much noise that it makes. I mean, you can hear it from here, and it's two miles away. We are about to come out of the woods. There is like some sort of housing development golf course thing here some really expensive houses i'm pretty sure that my house can fit inside of one of their living rooms seriously to me it's really funny you have these really nice houses you have this golf course and then you have the interstate and this droning obnoxious noise that never ceases Hmm, yes. I feel like it's time for a round of golf. Do you have your clubs, Luke? No, I have a club. I only need one club. That's how I would play golf. One club.
And gosh, that racket. It's unreal. I can't say that the mission is accomplished, but I can say I'm halfway done. 17 miles on the creeper. I'm now in Abington. Yes. <laughs> Everybody's getting off of the creeper. Everybody's going home. Now it's time for me to really start kicking some butt because it is 6.20 right now. So it's been six hours. Filming really does slow me down quite a bit. Lots of friendly people here out on the trail. You know, I should mention that while talking bad about Abington as a whole because of the crazy crime rate, there are lots of nice people here. Don't get me wrong, not everybody's bad. I am listening to Star Trek The Voyage Home. I believe that's the fourth Star Trek movie. Good stuff. I was never told about your visit. About it? I find it hard to believe that I'm... All right, everybody. Update time. Rocking and rolling back towards Damascus. So far, so good. Three or four miles outside of Abington right now. Whew. Getting a little bit cold, it really is. All in all, doing pretty good. I'm definitely tired. Feet hurt just a little bit, legs ache just a little bit. Now you all may be wondering, since Abington is a dangerous location, if I have my handgun with me, and I do, I am carrying and concealing for this trip. You are the only person that you can rely on when it comes to your safety. It's a fact. Can't be argued with either. That is what this little pack right here on my chest is. Quick access to my handgun. It's a Glock 43 9mm single stack. Pretty good pistol. I was there. I am now here. And I am going there. And then, here. The trek continues, everybody. And I tell you what, there's not much to talk about, is there? <laughs> Basically, I'm just going through the motions, walking back to Damascus, and that is where I will see you guys next, once I get all of this hiking done. I just finished up with Star Trek, the voyage home. Now it's time for something else, who knows. I have tons of movies to listen to. It's a possum. <laughs> You're completely sideways. All right, everyone, update time. Still rocking and rolling, doing pretty good. I just stopped and actually had a bite to eat, give my feet a rest, make a little bit of coffee. Pretty cool experience. I'm sitting there, I have my headlamp on, I can see some eyeballs out in the field. Grab my flashlight. And there's probably 20 or 30 deer just hanging out with me. <laughs> Less than 100 feet away. Hi, guys. Catching up with the others, are you? All right, well, go on.
You guys know what I'm doing, but you don't know what I'm chewing on right now. This happens to be some sort of like caffeine chewing gum, energy gum sort of stuff. Susan picked this up from somewhere. Susie, thank you so much. This is disgusting. <laughs> it is absolutely gross. <laughs> Yuck, that's bad. Getting closer to being back to Alvarado, Alvarado. What did we decide upon? People often ask me if I ever get scared while being out at nighttime in the dark. No, not at all. I know I've talked about this quite a bit, but for newbies to the channel, I have spent my life outside in the dark. <laughs> Most of the time without a headlamp, no flashlight, nothing like that. Oh no, there's a marker over there. I'm not going to look at it. <laughs> I am not looking at markers. I do not want to know how many miles in I am or how many more miles I have to go. I'm just walking. But anyways, I learned a long time ago there's nothing out here to be afraid of. Animals, for the most part, want nothing to do with you. I mean, freak things happen, of course. It really is humanity, humans, that you have to watch out for. That's the unfortunate truth. I will never let fear dictate what I do. Or don't do if I want to go hike at nighttime I'm going to do it you only live once everybody so make it a good life fill it full of awesome experiences just like this <laughs> yeah this is crazy but I'm having a ton of fun I am currently in Alvarado which means I am not far from Damascus, relatively speaking. <laughs> not exactly how many miles it is from here to Damascus. Seven or eight, something like that. Time for a new movie, Wedding Crashers. <laughs> it's pretty dang funny. Hi, little buddy. Okay, well, two things. I've never seen a house with red glowing windows before, and it looks like a demon was spray painted on that tree. Let's get the hell out of here. The possum, cool. I've seen countless possums tonight. They are actually opossums, but nobody in the south is going to say opossum. Everybody says possum. They are masters of playing dead. As soon as there's a threat nearby, they just stop, stand still. They can even fall over and play dead. They look kind of cute until they open their mouths. Then they are hideous. Alright guys, gals, it's almost over. I am basically pulling into town now, and that means I will be walking past houses. I switched over to the red light here, less noticeable. Whew, I am so glad this is almost over. <laughs> all in all, I feel great. I'm a little bit tired, not too bad. I could use a good rest. I think that's the the biggest thing. I really want to sit down, take a load off. It's all coming to an end. About half a mile from the car. 
I wish that pizza sub place was open right now. Folks, the Creeper Walk 2019 has been accomplished. It's done. Excellent job. <laughs> I'm absolutely tired. I'm worn out. It is time for me to say goodbye. I'm going home. I'm going to get some rest. Everybody, thank you so much for joining me for this adventure. It's been a ton of fun. Strength and honor to everybody. Get outside. Have your own adventures. I'll see you guys around. Bye, everybody.